catalysts are really like ma almost like magic. Our new type of catalyst are organic molecules, which you can bake sustainably from natural materials. It's more environmentally friendly, it's sustainable. Chemists, as I said, believed that their chemical catalysts always required a metal as the active principle. If enzymes can do this, we should also be able to use organic molecules as catalysts. I was convinced it must be possible. To be honest, I was pretty alone. And this, is, this was the, the biggest challenge, this feeling of being alone. If you don't deliver, you might as well sort of go on a different career path. So I had sleepless nights in the beginning, like maybe I'm, I'm, I'm sort of betting on the wrong horse. I had this crazy idea. I had a few sleepless nights, but then I did the experiment and it worked. My name is Benjamin List. I'm a director at the Max Planck Institute for Kohlenforschung. That means coal research. But it's a chemistry institute within the Max Planck Society in Germany. And we're doing mostly catalysis research, all aspects of catalysis. It's a very important science, but also great technology, as you may know. And I discovered a new type of catalysts that are based on small organic molecules. And this has led to a, a new field, I guess one can say this, and to a Nobel Prize given in 2021 in chemistry. So, so catalysts um, are really like ma almost like magic, right? Because they make chemical reactions happen, but they are not being used up while the chemical reaction occurs. And that means like a tool, like a hammer or, or you know, any other tool, you can repeatedly use it again and again and again, millions of times. And that, of course, implies also an attractive economical feature. When you add a little bit of something and you create a huge amount of something else that's valuable, you have a business case. So catalysis is always like a science, but also a technology. And we, we need catalysts, for example, to make fertilizers, that's one thing, and materials, plastic, fuel, medicines, uh, dye stuffs. Pretty much everything that surrounds us is made with catalysts. And in this context, in the context of my um, discovery, chemists were convinced that in their chemical catalyst, you would always need heavy metals. And metals, there's no inherent problem, but sometimes they can be toxic. Sometimes they can be rare and very expensive as a result. And so our new type of catalyst are organic molecules, which you can make sustainably from natural materials. For example, the one, the catalyst that we became famous for is proline. It's an amino acid that occurs in our own bodies. It occurs in plants and in chicken feathers. In fact, it used to be made from chicken feathers in the past by, you know, extracting it. So it's environmentally friendly. It's edible. I ate it in my talk today for fun. It's more environmentally friendly. It's sustainable. Metals are endangered. There's only a certain amount of palladium on this planet. And once this is all used, for example, in car catalysts, you know, in, in cars, there's also a catalyst to clean up the exhaust that comes out of the car. And that requires precious uh, metals like palladium and platinum. And they're relatively rare. They're, they're not as, as abundant as iron, for example. And so at some point, we don't have enough platinum anymore. It's diluted all over the world. And therefore, um, it's good to have Sustain a sustainable source of catalysts. Unfortunately, you know, I, this is, was a bad example in the car because the organic catalyst we're working on, they would not survive in a car exhaust. They would just burn away. <laughs> That's a, a disadvantage of the organic catalyst. But our catalysts are very good in making um, pharmaceuticals, for example. Antiviral uh, compounds are made technically using organocatalysis. Chemists, as I said, believed that their chemical catalysts always required a metal as the active principle. But if you look into nature, the enzymes, these are the catalysts of life in plants, in animals, in humans, and they catalyze all sorts of, of important chemical reactions and very efficiently so. And sometimes they come with a metal inside, but the majority of all enzymes are metal free. So for me, it was like, if enzymes can do this, we should also be able to use organic molecules as catalysts. I was convinced it must be possible. 
even though I was a bit nervous because at the time when I started out in 1999, to my knowledge, nobody was working in this area. I mean, literally, nobody. Hindsight, it, this is one of these discoveries where you think, yeah, of course, it should have worked, why not? But chemists, we always come up with an idea why there is an inherent disadvantage of using organic molecules, for example. Then you think, I got advice at Scripps where I was in Southern California at the time. People would tell me, yeah, but organic catalysts, they don't bind efficiently to substrates and that's why it doesn't work. You need a metal or an enzyme. You know, but this is sort of just, just uh, fantasies we're developing that have no real basis because we know that organic molecules react with each other. That was known since 200 years, right? Yeah, it's kind of fascinating. And then there's also trends and, and fashions and even in chemistry, we don't go like about researching the world randomly, uh, systematically, but they're trends. Something is a hot topic, right? AI, for example, right now, everybody wants to do AI research and, or, or something like that. And, and, and then other things that might be maybe more obvious and, and also super uh, powerful get ignored. Yeah. To be honest, I was pretty alone. And this, is, this was the, the biggest challenge, this feeling of being alone. I mean, I was given a nice chance, I should be honest. I, had, I was a tenure-track assistant professor at one of the top places in the US and therefore in the world, Scripps Research Institute. But I had very little funding. I had support for one postdoc and one technician. And at the time, they were not there yet. So I was alone in the lab. And everybody I suggested this idea to was skeptical. The people at, at Scripps said, as I, was I, what I said before, this is not going to work. Inherently, there's, there's no, not enough reactivity. And I was also applying here in Germany as a group leader. And the professor there, he was considered the best organic chemist in Germany at the time. He said, you can come here. You're obviously qualified. However, do not work with these organic molecules. This is not going to work do something serious with metals, right? So um, that didn't, and wasn't, that wasn't very encouraging, right? And because this, this phase is very critical in your career when you, when you start to build your own lab and you have to show the world you can come up with original ideas, right? And successfully so, um, and, but you don't have a permanent position, right? It's kind of a fragile, very fragile phase. And if you don't deliver, you might as well sort of go on a different career path. So you are nervous and you have, I had sleepless nights in the beginning, like maybe I'm, I'm, I'm sort of betting on the wrong horse. I don't know if that's an expression in English. It certainly is one in German, right? So um, yeah, and then, yeah. But, but fortunately, I don't want to complain too much because in my case, I was really lucky. I had this crazy idea. I had a few sleepless nights, but then I did the experiment and it worked. So the matter was solved. It was solved after, you know, a few weeks, basically. So, um, yeah, that I didn't have to endure, like, I don't know if you, Katalin Kariko, she just won the medicine award. You know, she had this idea of using mRNA as vaccine material and or just in general as a, as a pharmaceutical. And she faced so much skepticism, even by her colleagues, and they downgrade, they suggested to downgrade her if she wouldn't change the topic. But she insisted on keep on doing this, so she was downgraded. And she didn't get, I don't know, promoted to some other position. I don't know the details, but this kind of um, suffering I did not endure because I was successful early on, right? So the question is often, like, we, we heard this today at the conference, like, um, never give up. And never give up. There is a truth to it, and she proved it, and she got a Nobel Prize and, dis and saved the world, you know, in the pandemics. It's awesome what she did. But you should also see that there is a balance, right? You cannot say never give up, never give up, and then you're old and die, and it didn't work, right? So you have to know also when it's time to, to give up. That's what I would say.